Welcome to our time together as we look at the Word of God. It's a joy to be with you today, my friends. And how are you? How are you on this fine day? I trust you're doing well. And perhaps if you're down or discouraged, I trust that uh, as we study the Word of God together, uh, your spirits will be lifted and encouraged. Uh, today we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6. I'd invite you to take your Bibles if you have one and uh, turn, if you would, to the New Testament book of Ephesians chapter 6. We have been looking uh, now uh, for a few weeks at uh, the battle, the spiritual battle that we face every day, and that is our battle with Satan and his legions of evil angels. And today we want to look at uh, the different pieces of armor that are available to the child of God, namely listed in verses 13 through 17. And uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at uh, uh, today, and why don't we look to the Lord in a word of prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for our time together. Pray that you would use this time to encourage and strengthen our hearts. Open our eyes that we might see these wonderful truths found in thy word. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. We've been looking at this section of our spiritual warfare with Satan and his angels. And Paul tells us in verse 12 that our real battle is not with flesh and blood, but against these evil angels. We cannot see them, but they are very real and very active in our world today. And they will use any means to cause believers to fall into sin and thus lose out on eternal rewards. And we saw a little bit of that last time we were together as we looked at the, uh, a few of the uh, Satan's uh, strategies that he uses against us. Well, because of this spiritual battle we face every day, the Apostle Paul gives us two main commands in this passage. We saw that in verse 10. The first command is that we are to uh, allow ourselves to be strengthened uh, in the things of the Lord. And number two, the second command is we are to put on the whole armor of God. This is the only way in which we will be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. Our human ability is no match for Satan. Our human intellect is no match for him. We must rely on God's power every moment of every day to overcome the wiles of the devil. So we've looked at a number of the devil's main strategies that he has used uh, for centuries and still uses today. And some of them we mentioned last time we were together is that he seeks to deceive us into sin by using the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Uh, he seeks to imitate godliness by promoting thousands of religions that look good, that look godly on the outside, but indeed inside uh, there is no life. There is no life. He seeks to corrupt the minds of believers to the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. We need to read the Word of God as it is, not complicating it and not making it say what it doesn't say. All right, well, let's now look at these different pieces of armor that the Apostle Paul tells us that are available uh, to us in this battle against Satan and his angels. Paul tells us in verse 13, Wherefore we are to take up uh, the whole armor of God, that we may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The verb here, to take unto, means to take up and to put on. And this is our responsibility. No one is going to put on this armor for us. We personally have to take up each piece of armor and put it on. And the tense here of the verb is uh, in the aorist, which simply means that Paul is saying, take it up, put it on, and leave it on. Uh, we're not to uh, put it off. We're, once we take it up, we're to leave it on. You know, we ought never to take a vacation from our spiritual battle because Satan never takes a vacation. It is often when we take off this armor and relax that Satan attacks us. 
and we are overcome by his strategies. Remember, uh, back in the book of Nehemiah, uh, after Nehemiah had uh, completed the wall around Jerusalem, he didn't want anyone to let down their guard because he knew the enemy could attack at any moment. We too should never let down our guard because Satan, Peter says, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, Paul gives us this command for a purpose. The purpose here is that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day here refers to a particular day. It could refer to the day when Satan attacks, or it could re refer to the evil days just prior to the Lord's coming to rapture the church to be with Him. And we certainly can apply both cases uh, uh, to our lives. We know from 2 Timothy, Paul tells us that the things uh, that the evil seducers will wax worse and worse the closer we get to the coming of the Lord. And you know, Satan does not necessarily attack us every day. There may be times when he leaves us alone for a week, or there may be other times when he attacks us every day. We don't know when he's going to attack, and thus we need always to be ready and prepared and equipped so that we might be able to withstand those attacks when they come. And Paul says here, and having done all to stand. In other words, having done everything we could to stand against those attacks. I grew up in the state of Maine, and uh, I enjoyed going to the town of Rockland, Maine, on the coast. Uh, of Maine, and uh, out in the uh, town of Rockland, uh, right on the coast, there was a, a jetty or a breakwater that went out three quarters of a mile uh, out into the ocean. And, and that jetty or that breakwater, in the case of anywhere in the world, that breakwater or jetty is there to protect the harbor from receiving uh, massive waves that come from the ocean. And that breakwater jetty serves as a wall against the attacks of the sea, if you would. And sometimes those waves are, are easy to handle. And other times there's a storm that whips up and those boulders that make up the jetty have to do all they can to withhold the attacks of the waves. Well, this battle that we have against Satan and his angels is no pie-in-the-sky battle. Satan is going to give all that he has to defeat us, and if we think that there is nothing uh, to this battle, and we let down our guard, we will be overcome by Satan's fierce attacks. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, that we are to take heed lest ye fall. We need to give our all in this battle, and that means taking up every weapon that God has made available to us. And if we as believers fail to take up the whole armor of God, we will be wounded in the battle, and sometimes severely wounded and cast down. Sometimes believers fall into deep sin and end up paying the consequences for that sin, and they sometimes uh, end up perhaps even blaming God. And saying, why did God let this happen to me? And the answer is God made those, uh, that armor available to you and I, but we failed to take it up. We, we didn't put on the armor of God, and thus Satan attacks, attacked us and we lost the battle. It wasn't God's fault. It was our fault because we were not faithful in, in our responsibility in taking up the whole armor of God. Well, in verses 14 to 18, Paul gives us the various pieces of armor that we are to put on so that we don't have to fall into Satan's traps. Let's look at the first piece of armor here, verse 14. Paul says, Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. So we are to have our loins girded about with truth. We are responsible to put on uh, this 
belt of truth, and that's what these, uh, the, this idea here of, of uh, uh, having your loins girded about with truth, uh, literally this is a belt of truth that we are to put on. This truth speaks of the absolute truth found only in the Word of God. It speaks about the truth of who God is, the truth about mankind, the truth about eternity, the truth about the person and work of Jesus Christ, the truth of the miracles in the Bible, and all the doctrines found therein. If we are going to put on the belt of truth, we must know what truth is in order to know, uh, uh, in order to put this belt of truth on. And in order to know what truth is, we must be in the Word of God because God's Word has the truth. So Paul is calling us really here to know the truth so that we can take hold of it and put it on as a weapon against the devil because the devil is a liar and will try to deceive us as he did Eve in the Garden of Eden. Well, my friends, do you read and study the Word of God on your own? Have you read through the entire Bible at least once? You know, going to church once in a while or picking up the Word of God once in a while is not enough to know the truth. We must be in the Word of God daily, studying it, reading it. We must know the truth if we are going to put on this belt of truth that is available to us. And you know, it's sad that this wonderful piece of armor is available to every believer, but yet it is only those who take the time to study the Word of God so that they can know the truth. It is only them that will actually take hold of that belt of truth and put it on. It's available to us, but we have to be the ones responsible to put it on. That means we need to study God's Word. We need to know what the truth is. So Paul says, Stand therefore having the belt of truth girt about your body, and he says, And having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Another piece of armor available to us. And it's another very important piece of armor. And if we as believers... We as believers need to understand that the Bible says that we have been made righteous in God's sight by being in Christ. But this is not what Paul is speaking of here. For God does the work when he saves us and robes us in righteousness. We're told in Isaiah 59, verses 16 and 17, that Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah, put on righteousness as a breastplate. Jesus Christ was already robed in righteousness, yet He put on righteousness. This indeed spoke of, of Messiah living a righteous and holy life before God. Thus, this breastplate of righteousness speaks of the believer living a righteous and holy life before God. Yes, Paul tells us in Ephesians 1.4 that God chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him. This means that if we're going to put on this piece of armor, we must be committed to being obedient to God's Word. If we are living an unrighteous life before God and are not willing to be obedient to God, then we do not have on this breastplate of righteousness and thus, this leaves us open to Satan's attacks against us. You know, I wonder how many believers have been disqualified for service because of living an unrighteous, disobedient life before God. How many believers have caved in to pressure and the cares of this life because of living an disobedient life before God? How many unbelievers want nothing to do with Christianity because they see believers saying one thing, but doing another. If we're not willing to totally surrender our lives to the Lord, then we have a big hole in our armor, and Satan will attack and wound us, and perhaps cause us to fall into sin, 
and be overcome by his strategy. So we are to put on this breastplate of righteousness, being wanting to live a righteous life before God, wanting to do what is right in the sight of God. Verse 15, Paul says, We're to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're to put on the shoes of the gospel. Yes, Paul is saying that we need to be ready at any moment to go and share the gospel of peace. Why is this so important? Because Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, that Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The only way to defeat Satan's efforts to prevent unbelievers from accepting Jesus Christ as Savior is to share the gospel. Because the gospel is the only thing that is going to save a soul from hell. For Paul says in Romans 1.16, The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Peter picks up on this in putting on the shoes of the gospel in 1 Peter chapter 3. In verse 15, 1 Peter 3, verse 15, Peter says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that lies within you, with meekness and fear. Yes, we are to live in this world, and we're to be ready. We're to be ready at any moment to give an answer for those who come and ask us why we're different, or why we have the hope of eternal life. We are to be ready to give an answer. We are to have put on those shoes of the gospel so that we can be ready at any moment when God opens the opportunity to share the gospel with others. We need to put on the gospel shoes, this piece of armor that is so important, the gospel, uh, these shoes of the gospel. Yes, but Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10, Verse 15, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Yes, so important for us to put on this piece of armor called the gospel, the, uh, the uh, shoes of the gospel. Well, another piece of armor Paul gives us uh, that's available to us in verse 16, as he says, above all taking the shield of the faith which will uh, uh, with which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In back in the first century in the Roman army, the shield was a, a two and a half by four foot shield that covered nearly most of the body. Paul exhorts us here to take up the shield of the faith. And Jude, in his epistle, exhorts us in verse 3 of Jude to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. When the New Testament talks about the faith, it is referring to the whole body of truth found in God's Word from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, we need to know the faith, we need to know God's word so that we can take up the word of God. Remember when Satan was attacking uh, Jesus? We looked at that last time we were together, Matthew chapter 4. Every attack that uh, Satan made against Satan, uh, I'm sorry, that Satan made against Jesus, uh, Jesus defeated uh, Satan's strategy by quoting scripture. Yes, indeed, Jesus was taking up uh, uh, the shield of the faith. And as a result, he was able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. How important it is, my friend, for you and I to spend time in God's Word. That we might know it. That we might learn it. That we might live it in our lives. That we may ha might have it memorized. So that when Satan attacks us, we can defend ourselves by taking up the shield of the faith and quoting to him scripture so that we might be able uh, to quench, to extinguish all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 
Yes, we need to firmly stand upon the whole counsel of God so that we can indeed defeat Satan's strategies. Yes, it's often, my friends, that Satan is going to tempt us to sin. He's going to persuade us uh, to uh, get involved in that which is ungodly, to be involved in, in wicked activities. And the more we know the Word of God, the more we'll have God's mind, the more we'll be able to discern that which is good and that which is evil, so that we don't have to fall into Satan's traps, but take a stand against him, so that we can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17, Paul says that we're to take up the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. This helmet of salvation is probably in reference to our eternal security in Christ. And this is important for us to take up, because no matter what happens, we can be assured of victory. Paul tells us in Romans 8, 1, that there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, that we are kept by the power of God. Jesus said in John 10, 28 and 29, that no one is able to pluck us out of the Father's hand. The Bible makes it very clear that once we have placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we have everlasting life, we are safe and secure forever. We can never lose our salvation once we're saved. Therefore, we are to take up this helmet of salvation. We are to stand upon the fact that once saved, always saved. And uh, Satan will often try to persuade us and tempt us and make us doubt whether we're saved or not. But if we have placed our faith and trust in Jesus as our Savior, we're safe and secure forever. And thus we can take up this helmet of salvation and uh, be able to... Uh, stand against Satan's strategies. Paul says in verse 17, not only we are to take up the helmet of salvation, but we're to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yes, this means we ought to have a lot of verses memorized so we can take them with us to work in the grocery stores and in the park. The Word of God is our sword, our sword to attack. Satan, when he seeks to tempt us. And I remember again as we see Satan trying to attack Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Satan used the word of God as his sword to attack back and to defeat Satan's strategies. You see, the author of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 4 verse 12 that the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirits and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God is living, and it's powerful. It's powerful. It's our sword that we're to take with us wherever we go. The Word of God is there to lead us in the right path. And the more we know it and understand it, the more we will keep ourselves from falling into Satan's traps and the more we can use it to counterattack Satan. My friends, how much of the Word of God do you know? Do you have any of it memorized? Well, Paul gives us Paul gives us some wonderful pieces of armor that we are to take up and to put on. And this is our responsibility because Satan will take no vacation. Satan will seek to defeat us. And, uh, and uh, he will seek to uh, uh, persuade us to fall into sin and, and to doubt God. But we can take up these pieces of armor that he has given us so that we can, uh, so that we can uh, defeat Satan's strategies. Well, in verse 18, Paul gives us uh, one more uh, piece of armor. And he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that in this I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul 
talks about the armor of prayer. Prayer is so important, my friends. We need to spend time, if you're saved, praying to your Heavenly Father, asking Him for wisdom, for guidance, for direction. When you're reading the Scriptures, praying to the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God might open your mind and heart to what is there, that you might know it, you might understand it. Prayer is communion with the Lord. Prayer is fellowship with the Lord. And as the saying goes, uh, uh, one week without prayer makes one, or seven days without prayer makes one week. Yes, seven days without prayer makes one, W-E-A-K, week, spiritually weak. We need to be, we need to not only be in the Word of God, memorizing it, learning it, living it, but we need to be in prayer, in tune with God, day by day, and day by, and moment by moment. Paul gives some concluding statements in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21, But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you, for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs, and that ye might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. So Paul closes this book. Wonderful book of Ephesians. And I trust as we have gone through it, I trust you have learned some things from this book. Wonderful doctrines found in the book of Ephesians. And my friends, as I close, I always like to uh, ask well, whether you're saved or not. Maybe you're listening to this program and you have not, you have never placed your faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ. My friend, if that's the case, then you have not put on any of these pieces of armor. The Bible says that Satan is seeking to blind your mind and heart away from the gospel, from believing it and understanding it. My friends, the gospel is very simple. Jesus Christ came to earth nearly 2,000 years ago. He was the God-man. He grew up as fully divine and fully human. He went to the cross to bear the sins of the whole world because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, my friends, even you have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. None of us on our own can make it to heaven. We are in desperate need of a Savior to deliver us from our sins. And my friends, Jesus Christ came to be the Deliverer. He came to be the sin bearer. He came to be the savior of the world. He died for you, my friend. He died for you in particular. He was buried. He rose again the third day. And he is alive today. He is the living savior waiting to come back. But my friends, in order for you to go to heaven, you must receive Jesus Christ as your savior. Have you ever done that? If not, may today be the day that you will recognize your need of a Savior, that you will look to Jesus Christ, cry out to Him, that He would have mercy upon you. Ask Him to come into your life and be your Savior. If you do that from the heart, my friends, the Bible says He will give you everlasting life. Don't put it off another hour, another minute, another day. Trust Him today, and you can have everlasting life. Thank you for joining us. May you join us next time as we begin something new, uh, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again.